Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content and, uh, provided in this segment is meant for, for educational room, purposes and is not a solicitation to, to buy or sell commodities. Uh, we're going to kick things back off and uh, top of the line up here this, this afternoon is going to be Owen Feenstra. Uh, Owen hails from Southern Arizona. He grew up on his family's dairy there, uh, came to Wheaton College in Illinois uh, to get his bachelor degree and uh, has been working forever ag now for several years uh, little known fact uh, owen is a fantastic fly fisherman and so if you want to know some good streams around the uh, midwest talk to owen he's probably fished it um, could tell you the hot spots but uh, owen uh, having grown up in southern arizona on his dairy really knows what it's like to uh, operate in a very arid climate and so uh, Owen has headed up our efforts with the pasture range and forage product uh, that we have uh, put forward through our uh, insurance agency. So to share you know, the 30,000 foot view of this product and how it works and how it can work for you, we have uh, Owen Feenstra. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Um, Yes, it is fitting. I grew up in a pretty dry, arid climate, and I'm speaking to an insurance product that you could possibly get paid if it doesn't. So this is pasture rangeland forage insurance. So what is PRF? PRF is an area-based insurance that allows producers to insure themselves against a lack of rainfall needed to grow their perennial forages on either haying or grazing ground. Put simply, the producer is going to choose a few time periods in a rainfall level, and after the end of that time period, if it rains less than the rainfall level that you chose, then you would be owed an indemnity. So how does that work? You're protecting yourself against a lack of rainfall in a specific area over a specific period on a specific intended use. Let's start with specific area. Wherever your operation falls, wherever your operation is, it will fall into a predetermined area called a grid. This is either 12 by 17 miles or 17 by 17 miles, depending on where you're at in the US. I took a little screenshot, an aerial, aerial view of some of what these grids look like, um, even here today in Platteville. So just for example, if you farm right outside of Platteville, you would fall into the grid 27159. That is the grid of where you would be insured at. That's where the rainfall measure, the rainfall would be measured. So as a producer, you have the ability to choose from 11 time periods, which are called index intervals. They are comprised of two months apiece, and you can choose a minimum of two and a maximum of six. January, February, February, March, March, April, so on and so forth, out to December. But the only thing that you can't do is you can't ensure two time intervals that share a month. Say that you were owed an indemnity in January, February, in February and March. You'd be double dipping on February. I don't think the uh, insurance company would be too happy about that. And on a specific intended use. So the intended uses that you can sure are hang ground, irrigated or non-irrigated, and your grazing ground. When I was talking to some producers out west, they said, why the heck would I be signing up for rain insurance when all my alfalfa is irrigated? RMA's, RMA's answer to that is if it doesn't rain, you're spending more money on water per acre foot to grow that forage. Grazing, obviously, those producers' livelihoods are made off of cattle out in the cattle out in the field, even on pasture, and ample rain is needed for that pasture growth. So, how do we determine coverage? The amount of coverage and its cost is determined by the producer's decisions on four things: coverage level, productivity factor, index interval or the time period, and the number of acres and allocation of your acreage across those time intervals. Let's start with coverage level. So the producer is able to choose this variable from 70 to 90% of average rainfall and 5% increments. And as you can see, depending on what coverage level you choose, 
there's a subsidy level associated with it. 51 to 59% is quite a heavily subsidized. Productivity factor. You can ensure your value of your ground is low as 60% up to 150%. <laughs> this will ultimately affect the premium and the amount you are paid in the case of an, in the case of an indemnity. What I, I kind of want to just focus on one interval to kind of look at some real data and see how this works in real in real life. I apologize, I forgot there should be a column of years over here, but this is 2001 to 2020 with the projection for 2021. It's an index interval. Um, pretty much saying that, for example, in 2005, the index rating at the end of the interval was 52.9. Going back to our coverage levels, we can choose 70% to 90% of average rainfall. If we chose the 90% coverage level in 2005, at the end of April and May, it rained 52.9% of average. They're going to calculate a percentage change between your coverage level in the actual ending reading of rainfall and calculate that back into an indemnity per acre. 2005, it was $221 per acre. It, last year, it rained 87.8% of, of average rainfall. If you had a 90% coverage, which is what I set this to, and these readings are based off of, you were owed $13 per acre. Allocation of coverage. So we've chosen two up to six time intervals, but now we need to figure out where we want to place our acres within this. We're not placing specific fields within these time intervals. We're just allocating our total insurable acreage across the intervals that we have chosen. For example, we have a thousand acres and we look at April and May and historically it has performed well. It's a drier month. We want to put a majority of our acreage in April and May. We'll put 70% in April, May, and we'll put an additional 30% in that March. If you were owed an indemnity in April and May, it would be on the, the 70% of your 1,700 acres. This 50 cents would be paid out per acre on the 700. Allocation, there's a couple of decisions that go into that. One would be, obviously, this is protecting against rainfall for forage growth. What times of the year are the most dry and do we need the most rain? Let's put a percentage or yeah, put a percentage of your acreage into the intervals that you really need that rain that rain. Also, what I like doing is sitting down with individuals and kind of diving into the data a little bit. What has been the past performance or rate of return of five, 10, 20 years? Kind of taking those uh, those decisions working through those, thinking of rate of return or past performance, the, the times of the, the year that you need the most rainfall, we can kind of divvy up that acreage that best, that'll best best fit your, your operation. So how is the rain collected? This is not, the rain is not collected from the rain gauge that the seed, the rain gauge at the seed company gave. This is from the NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, has thousands upon thousands upon thousands of these rain gauges all over the lower 48 in these grids. Where your farm is located, from the center of that grid, they're going to choose the four nearest rain gauge stations to collect that data. Within your grid, within your index interval that you have chosen, there are 73 years of data. I gotta double check that number. I think it's around 70. There's 73 years of data. And that's that's how they're pulling that average. With 100 being average, 90% coverage level, if it comes in at 50%, then in that in that scenario, you'd be owed an in, indemnity. In, in, in. Why would I use PRF? I think it's a very good hedge against the lack of rainfall on your hang and grazing ground. Coming from Arizona, when I, a lot of ranchers and producers use it out there, and I knew it was something that um, I even wanted to take back to my home operation that we use, and it's worked out pretty splendidly. It's subsidized 51 to 59 percent, 
and it is that optionality that we can choose whatever intervals we want where we need the rain the most. It's cash friendly and that the billing of the premium does not occur until 10 months after the coverage has been put on. And it's an annual product. It's one decision to make one time a year. For the sake of time, I am not. I could get more surgical with this. Like Mike said, it's a bit of a 30,000 foot view. Um, I'm more than happy to have a discussion with you to look at what a quote would look like for your specific area. Um, it, ver it, varies, it varies case by case by intended use. Um, premiums will be different. Obviously, acreage will be different. So all those things are kind of, we, I can sit down and go through a quote with you because it is going to be different case by case. But I do thank you for your time. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, I'm available to take those now. Now, one thing to know about PRF is that while, in fact, it is largely a product that we've aimed at drier climates around the country, keep in mind it's equally applicable in places like Wisconsin, Illinois, okay. Iowa, or Minnesota. No, I think that's a good point. That, that rainfall data, even though it may rain less out west, that data is normalized wherever you're at. So any deviations from normal average in your area, you would possibly be in the position to be in the <laughs>